Hello there, you're watching VLAN Miniatures. It's been a while since my last update because I've been working on this demon of Nurgle. Which I hate. In this episode I'm going to paint some rusty metallics on this knight, which is uh, a 3D sculpture that I did a little while ago. And if you want to paint one of these yourself, you can find the files on my Patreon. I will leave a link down below. I'm going to paint the metal using mostly dry brushing and washes, uh, so it's nice to have a dark base coat to start from. So here I'm just covering the entire miniature with a dark brown. The drying time of a watered down coat of brown paint is exactly one cup of coffee. For the next part I will be dry brushing and stippling on some metallics. Starting with this dark bronze, uh, it's almost as dark as the, the brown, so it doesn't matter if it gets into the cracks. I just like starting with a non-metallic base coat, so yeah, there's a little bit matter in the shadows. This first one was warp block bronze, and now we're moving over to lead belcher, which is more of a gun metal. And I'm not uh, really cleaning my brushes in between uh, changing colors, so might be a little bit darker or more bronzy this uh, next layer but the important thing is to dry brush a little bit lighter on the second stage and this is of course a 3d print so you can see a little bit of lines uh, going down here print lines and whenever they appear I like to stipple instead of dry brush so that I don't uh, yeah so that I don't enhance them instead I can try to hide them with some thicker paint and then we're over on Runefang Steel, which is going to be the lightest color uh, for this metal. I want to break up the armor a little bit, so I'm using a bit of gold uh, on some areas. And some smaller uh, details. This is not going to look as gold in the end, because I will wash everything and wear it down. I think it's nice to have a little bit of variation before we start doing that. Right now it looks really bad, but uh, we're going to fix this by tone everything down and introduce some shadows. So the gold looks really gold and the silver is very patchy, but uh, with some washes I will bring everything together. And here I'm using my two favorite ones at the same time, Camo Green and Sepia Shades from Citadel, and they are great to combine, I think. The green is darker and it's nice to uh, add some shadows, while the sepia one makes everything a little bit more brownish. I'm highlighting some of the sharpest edges with Runefang Steel and I'm using this both on the metals, or, or on both types of metals, both the silver ones and the gold based ones. Also making some scratches and stipple marks around to keep it interesting. All right, let's start applying some rust. When applying rust, I start with a very watered down uh, brown. This is scrag brown, a very reddish brown, uh, not too dark because we actually want it to contrast uh, in, in the recesses or where we apply it. And I'm going to build this up in layers, so I'm trying not to overdo it uh, on this first round. Although I want it to be very rusty, <laughs> because it's very, the design is very worn, so I want to enhance the, the parts where I've added some rust marks, like down here. The gold and rust color is a little bit too uh, similar. So for the gold parts, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, watered down uh, blue green, just as a nice contrast and for a little bit of uh, verdigris, is that what it's called? Uh, the oxidation of bronze. And yeah, this is uh, lupercal green. It's actually a completely new paint that I'm trying out. I have one that I've used in the past, which is a little bit more blue. Uh, that's worked very well for this, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. Although I see now that a little bit more blue would probably look better, so I'll use the other one next time. 
I ended up starting using this on the metal areas as well. This doesn't make any sense, but it looks good. It's nice to add to the shadows to have a little bit of variation. I'm also using this on the sword to make it look a little bit more shiny. So I'm making like a shadow area here and similarly on the other side. It's nice to have this uh, pattern with like two opposite sides of uh, shadow and light when doing swords. It's what people do when they yeah, paint like the energy swords and stuff with the NMM or uh, these insane looking blue power swords and such for 40k. Which it's not really my style, I don't like it that much, but uh, here I feel that I need a little bit of... Uh, interest as everything on this one is metal. I'm redefining some of the areas of rust with some pure orange uh, and that's because the brown becomes a little bit darker or actually a lot darker when it dries especially when it's applied uh, watered down like this. I'm applying this much more sparingly though as a highlight over the brown areas. I quickly finished painting this one mostly using a dirty white color I'm not 100% sure about the tree, uh, as I went with a highlight of pure white, it looks a little bit too bright maybe. But as I'm playing Elden Ring right now, I don't really remember what the outside looks like, so this might be correct. Anyway, if you would like to paint one of these, again, it's available from my Patreon as a downloadable STL file. And if you think this pose is a little bit too boring, then I have another one too. So different helmet and a different pose for more or less the same design. I also have a bunch of other designs that are included as well. That's it for this episode. I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.